Good evening, everyone. My name is Lana Wilson, and it is my pleasure to be the gallery educator at the Mann Art Gallery here in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, in the E.A. Rawlinson Center for the Arts. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the virtual awards presentation of the 10th annual High School Juried Art Show. The Mann Art Gallery is located on Treaty 6 territory, homeland of the Cree peoples of the Métis Nation and Dakota. Tonight, it is our pleasure to celebrate the artistic achievements of the youth artists of Prince Albert. Each year, we have a wonderful opportunity to see the skill, talent, and hard work of these artists. It really is hard work. It's the attention to detail, focus, practice, and dedication to realizing their vision that enables these artists and these works to be so successful in seizing and holding our attention. This year, we're very thankful that the High School Juried Art Show can take place in a dual format, both online and in the gallery proper. Last year, the exhibition took place entirely virtually as the gallery was closed during the onset of the pandemic. It's wonderful to be able to return to the gallery and have the majority of works physically on display here on our walls as we celebrate the 10th anniversary of this exhibition. But we still have images posted online and projected in the gallery for safe viewing from across the province and around the world. I would really like to thank my coworker, the registrar, Tia Furstenberg, for all of her hard work in photographing the exhibition, putting the works online, and doing all of the graphic and website design for this exhibition. Thank you so much, Tia, for that work. I know the students, teachers, and their families appreciate it. The Mount Art Gallery's first annual school art exhibition took place in April and May of 2004. There was elementary and high school work shown as part of the school art exhibition for a couple of years. And the first high school juried art exhibition was juried by director curator Griffith Aaron Baker and educator Twyla Exner. And that took place in May and June of 2012. Since then, the Man Art Gallery has displayed 704 artworks by a similar number of students in this space. So I think that's a pretty fantastic accomplishment. We are grateful to all of the students and teachers who submitted these works. We always have more artworks than we're able to jury into the show, and making that decision is always very difficult. We, have, we make our selections based on the following criteria. Demonstrated commitment to the artwork, that's carrying the piece through to the end with consistency at whatever skill level the student is at. Innovative use of materials, creative use of subject matter, often that's depicting something that's unexpected or helping us to see something in a new way. Any interesting ideas or stories behind the work, something that speaks to us. Aesthetically pleasing use of design principles. We're looking at evidence of risk taking. Is the student trying something new, trying to push themselves when executing the artwork? And demonstrated skill or technical proficiency uh, with the medium. These are all of the things that go into making an artwork truly outstanding. This year, we had over 110 submissions, and we're displaying 90 works in the gallery and online. Our works this year come from students at Carleton Comprehensive Public High School, Ecole St. Mary High School, Prince Albert Collegiate Institute, Westmore Public High School, and W.P. Sandon High School in Shelbrook. Thank you to all the teachers and students at those schools who submitted work to us. Over the past 10 years, many schools uh, from around the city and the nearby district have also participated. In the past, we've had students from Regent Academy, from Blessed Marie Rivier, from St. Louis School, from Birch Hills, from Wanska here in Prince Albert, and from the Prince Albert Youth Residence. Also, not a public school, but certainly a school of art that is well known to many. Uh, Christina Thoen's Art School always has students that produce high quality work, and I know that she's a mentor to many. So thank you to all of the teachers and students from those schools over the years for being part of the High School Juried Art Show. Every year at the exhibition, we see similar themes that emerge characters and celebrities from pop culture, uh, some themes of horror or the grotesque, fantasy, uh, eyes, always eyes full of such wonderful expression, uh, works referencing current events or important social issues, 
works that are purely flights of fancy and exercises in imagination, works expressing dreams, favorite subject matter like landscapes or animals, uh, works that were made for class assignments where the students are demonstrating their learning or their use of artistic principles, and always, always we see so many dynamic portraits. It's especially fitting this year that there are so many portraits on display. Currently, in the main gallery, Carol Wiley's emotional series, They Didn't Know We Were Seeds, is on display until May 29th. Carol is a well-known Saskatoon artist specializing in portraiture, and she has painted 18 portraits of Jewish Holocaust survivors and Indigenous residential school survivors. With these 18 large-scale portraits in the main gallery, it's very fitting to have two portrait walls in the project space and the education studio as well. Portraits offer us an opportunity to depict an individual, a really important subject, uh, and create a relationship between the artist, the subject, and the viewer. For high school students, at a time of discovering and asserting one's identity, it's especially meaningful and powerful to be able to represent oneself in the way that one chooses. These works all tell a story about the artists who created them, and these portraits can be both revealing and enigmatic. Hopefully, you'll have a chance to visit the gallery either in person or online and discover works that speak to you. I know that you will be as impressed with the evidence of these students' artistic labors as we are. It really takes courage to be able to display your work uh, in the public. And so again, we are truly thankful to all of the students and teachers who have shared their work with us. We hope that we have fulfilled our mission in presenting your works in a public, professional gallery space to celebrate your accomplishments and allow our community to appreciate your talents and all of your hard work. We'd like to thank the following teachers for helping to coordinate the submission of artworks to the exhibition. Lana Lawrenson, Krista Harlock, Jennifer Brown, Charlene Roy, Christina Thowen, and I'm sure that I'm missing other teachers and parents out there. I know that these students have had a lot of support uh, from their parents and teachers uh, and everyone who is able to help them achieve their artistic dreams. Now we're going to go on to the awards. We're sincerely grateful to the sponsors of this year's awards. These are also sponsors that have often sponsored the awards for the entire 10 years. And so we're so thankful to your dedication and celebration of student work. The Prince Albert Council for the Arts, the John V. Hicks Fund through the Man Art Gallery, local artist Cheryl Ring, On the Avenue Artisans Gallery, and the Kyla Art Group. Your dedication uh, to youth art is what has encouraged and recognized so many of these students over the years, and also, I'm sure, helped them to purchase art supplies. So, our, follow our awards are as follows. To start with, the Creative Clay Award is sponsored by Cheryl Ring, local visual artist, and the award goes to Ruth Santiago for the artwork entitled Super Flat Zen. I was immediately struck by this artwork as soon as I opened the box. The playful colors and the multiple levels of this work really made it stand out. I love the sense that the fish looks like it's underwater, and then you have these two additional tiers of the lily pad and the flower. I thought there was a great attention to detail in the scales of the fish and the petals of the flower, and I really love the texture of the tail. It really comes together to create uh, a unified artwork, uh, and it brought me a lot of pleasure. Um, so thank you and congratulations, Ruth, uh, for creating this work, and thank you to Cheryl Ring, uh, herself well known as a clay artist, for sponsoring this award. Cheryl Ring has also consistently sponsored a second award called the Juicy Color Award. And this is an award that goes to exceptional use and attention to detail in the use of color. This year, the award goes to Kieran Lanois for the artwork entitled Tribal Leader. And that work uh, is just behind us on the wall here. 
This is a fantastic portrait that has incredible attention to detail in the eyes, um, in the shapes and wrinkles in the face. I noticed that the proportion uh, is very well executed. Uh, and of course, um, there is uh, no other artwork that could compare in terms of saturation of color or how the use of color really complements and makes that subject come alive. The color here is really integral to the entire composition of the piece and to the subject matter. That color just glows, and we really appreciate uh, the finesse uh, in the colored pencils of that work. So thank you so much, Kieran, uh, for your hard work. And uh, we really enjoyed uh, seeing this piece. Our next award is for the juror's choice. Uh, and this award is sponsored by the John V. Hicks Fund here at the Man Art Gallery. The award goes to Ella Canton for the artwork entitled Mini Golf. Uh, I did not know that uh, it was uh, Ella Canton uh, who had created this work when I first saw it, but I do remember Ella as a student uh, at uh, summer art camps here at the Man Art Gallery, and so that was a pleasant surprise. With this particular work, I was really impressed by the use of oil paint, not a medium that you see many um, students using in the high school setting. I was really impressed uh, by the detail here. The proportion, she's really achieved a sense of distance with the mini golf course. I thought that there was quite a sophisticated division of space uh, and bringing a sense of texture with the trees in the background, uh, the green, the, um, the green um, of the putting green there, uh, and I really enjoyed um, the positioning of the, of the figures. It looks like maybe this is referencing a, a favorite memory or something that she and her family like to do, but I was very impressed by both the color use um, and the composition of this work. So thank you, Ella, congratulations. This is an award I chose to sponsor in honor of my brother. This is called the Chad Wilson Award for Illustration. And this year, the award goes to Jordan Twist for the artwork entitled Hungry Little Trees. This was immediately striking when I first saw it. Um, such a unique um, use of texture of light and shadow and these very expressive, very fearful eyes. The um, ability that uh, Jordan has shown to convey this um, emotional sense of um, fear, um, you know, terror uh, as these little hands are coming out. Uh, it was um, really dynamic. I, I really got this. Uh, um, emotional connection to this particular work. I was really struck by the use of the charcoal, the overall composition uh, and its expression. And so fantastic uh, use of charcoal and drawing to be able to create such a dynamic and high contrast uh, work. So thank you, Jordan, for this great piece. The next award is the Artistic Innovation Award. This is sponsored by the Prince Albert Council for the Arts. And the award goes to Dory Miller, for the artwork that is untitled, uh, but it's a portrait of a woman in very vibrant colors. And you can see how she's created this, this almost a multiple exposure image uh, where the three different images of the woman all come together to form one portrait. And she's really playing with primary and secondary colors as she's creating this, this sense of movement in a static medium. As I thought that was a very innovative use of color and composition, uh, and it really caught my eye. The Award for Artistic Achievement, uh, this is sponsored by On the Avenue Artisans Gallery. This award goes to Maria Trepain for her artwork entitled Storyteller. This is the absolutely spectacular eye painted in oil paint. Uh, this work is only available uh, to see online. It was submitted as a photograph. I would love to see it in person, but all of the digital artworks are projected inside the Man Art Gallery on the project space wall. So even if you're not online, you will still be able to see the digital works in the gallery. I think you'll agree with me uh, that this eye is so realistic, I could swear uh, that it, I, I could see it blink at any moment. There's a wonderful sense of reflection a sense of wetness uh, across the surface of the eye, incredible attention to detail being paid to the highlights and the shadows uh, that really model the, the iris, uh, the whites of the eye, um, and the lash line. 
So really an outstanding work. Uh, fantastic color sense in terms of achieving uh, flesh tones uh, as well as the white uh, and the pupil of the eye. So thank you so much, Maria. I recognized uh, your name right away from previous works. And that's true of several of the award winners. I do recognize your names. And sometimes I can recognize styles over the years. So congratulations to Maria for the Artistic Achievement Award. And our final award of the night, the Best in Show Award, sponsored by On the Avenue Artisans Gallery, is presented to Tia Lee McCallum for her artwork entitled Cut Braids. Uh, this is an artwork that is so emotional and so difficult um, for many people in our community to, to see. Um, we see an older figure in the foreground um, and um, what I imagine to be the, the image of, of her younger self um, in the background. I, I believe it's referencing residential schools um, and a lot of the pain that that has caused uh, to so many people in our community. Uh, the emotion is so powerful in this, um, but the way that uh, Tia Lee has created the composition, um, the play between the figure in the foreground and the background, the play between present and past, um, the way that um, the braid is referenced uh, in the upper left down to the lower right, that composition uh, really helps to get the message across. So does her technical proficiency with the pencil. Again, in these set of portraits, her incredible attention to detail in the texture of the face, uh, in the eyes, is really what helps this portrait come alive and is what underscores that emotional intensity. Uh, it's for all of these reasons that this is a truly outstanding artwork um, that is, is so compelling. It's also a work that, again, happens to speak uh, so clearly to work by Carol Wiley inside the main gallery. Uh, and so again, I really hope that you have a chance to come and view this work and all of the artworks in person here at the gallery in addition to viewing Carol's show. So thank you, Tia Lee McCallum, and congratulations again uh, on this truly outstanding artwork. Thank you and congratulations to all of our award winners and all of our award sponsors. In conclusion, I would like to thank all of the sponsors of the Man Art Gallery that helped to make exhibitions like this possible. These organizations are truly investing in our community when they're supporting public institutions like the Man Art Gallery. We're grateful for funding from the City of Prince Albert, at the provincial level from Sask Arts, at the federal level from the Canada Council for the Arts. The major sponsors uh, for the education program this year and in past years are the Community Initiatives Fund and the Community Grant Program. And those receive significant funding from Saskatchewan Lotteries. As always, the Man Art Gallery would not be here in its present form without the patronage of Diane and Roger Mann. So, Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our teachers. And thank you for all, to all of the students for having the courage to share your work with us. I hope that the rest of the community can join the MAN board and staff here in celebrating the artistic achievements of these young artists. And we hope that you will feel proud to see your work on these walls. We're truly proud of you. We all want to encourage you in your future artistic careers. Uh, and thank you again for sharing your skills and talents with us. Thank you so much. That you have a chance to vote for your favorite artwork. We want to thank the Kyla Artist Group, as always, for sponsoring the People's Choice Award. You can vote for this inside the Man Art Gallery. Fill out the ballot box by the door. You do only get one vote, so I know it will be a difficult decision. Online, you can select your favorite of the digital-only submissions at the Man Art Gallery website, manartgallery.ca. And for the digital artworks where there's photographs, you can click the heart uh, to indicate a like. So thank you very much. We really look forward to seeing uh, who will win the People's Choice Award. You have until May the 29th, the last day of the exhibition, to cast your votes.